welcome to my vlog. Today, I'm going to be talking about first episode of season 16 of Deadliest Catch. Just a little warning. I know my voice sounds different. This is the first time I filmed in over three weeks on my camera. Because I was out sick for two weeks. And I'm still getting over this virus. I'm pretty sure I had COVID-19. I had a test that was taken, and it came back negative. Those tests are not as reliable as you'd think they are. I've heard it t sometimes takes two or three times successfully be diagnosed with COVID-19. A couple weeks ago, I went to my doctor and had a blood test and was put on high dosage of vitamins and they found out I had a, that my lymphocytes were low. That is a sign of COVID-19. So I'm just getting over this virus and my voice is going to sound different. I might cough, just a heads up. We'll just see how this goes. So this season of Deadliest Catch is going to be really crazy because... The Russians are clamping down on their on their fleet. They're cutting out legal crab fishing. So what they're going to do is that is going to make the prices of crab go higher. And this is going to be one of the most profitable seasons for for the captains. And it's red versus red, white, and blue USA. So this is going to lead to a price war. It's first come, first serve. So whatever boat gets to the dock first, they will get the highest price for crab. So this season's going to be crazy. It's red versus red, white, and blue. USA versus Russia. I forgot to say something about Delia's catch. Add this to my video. This season, there's not going to be a captain that has been on for three or four years. And that captain and the boat is the Brenna A. Captain Sean Dwyer. This season, they don't have him on Delia's Catch. So I wanted to give you guys that heads up that you will not be seeing or hearing me talking about the Brenna A. In season 16 of Delia's Catch. Wild Bill Flying, who's the owner and captain of the Summer Bay. It showed him flying into Dutch Harbor and getting ready to go. And it showed the Cornelia Marie. And the Cornelia Marie, they just had over or close to a million dollars worth of upgrades. And they basically turned... They totally redid the interior of the Cornelia Marie and updated everything. And they changed the propellers and they made the steering better on the Cornelia Marie. They did that in the off season and it's basically like a Corvette now. It's better than what it was when Phil Harris was running the boat. It needed to be upgraded. Because the Cornelia Murray just got a million dollars more worth of crab quota. So, they thought they'd make the Cornelia Murray the best she's been since she first came into service. So, then it showed the southern wind and Captain Harley, he, has, he bought a whole bunch of these things. They're not new. But they haven't been used for a while in the crabbing industry. They're zinc melt away things. So you'd put them on your, your pot or your string. And after 24 hours of being in the water, the buoys pop up. And they start floating on top. So then it goes to the saga. And the saga is just coming into... The Saga is just driving into port from their home port of Kodiak, Alaska. 
and it shows Jonathan Hillstrand riding in on a motorcycle to the dock where the saga will be. And they meet up and it's a big old party because Jonathan brings his one of his brothers, Neil Hillstrand, who's an engineer, who used to be the engineer on the Time Bandit. And now he's on the crew with the saga. And a younger Hillstrand, he's there to help out on deck and Jonathan brings his wife. So the saga is going to be filled with a whole bunch of people. Also, I forgot one thing on the Cornelia Marie. They brought in Maria, who's 25 years old and is one of the greenhorns on the Cornelia Marie. And they're adding an extra hand, so hopefully it'll help them work faster. And she's been in the fishing industry for years. She was born and raised in Alaska. Um, then it goes to the Northwestern, and it shows Sig flying in from Seattle. And Mandy has the Northwestern out setting 77 pots. They're blank. There's no bait in them. They're just there so they don't have to come back into port and bring in another and load up because they want to get a head start on the Russian fleet. So she's setting them and normally when you set crab pots to go fishing, you set them every two tenths of a mile. And she was doing that for... She was setting them too far apart, so it'd take a couple more hours just to haul in the pots when they go to load them and move them to good fishing grounds. Then it goes to the Summer Bay, and the Summer Bay is, they're in port, and Captain Bill is just rolling in, and he's talking with Nick McLaughlin and one other deckhand, and... He finds out that two of the crew that went out and were smoking dope and that's not allowed on the summer bay. So what happened was they fired, uh, Wild Bill fired those two deckhands. Now he has to go find two more deckhands before he can go out. So Nick and the other crew member were searching for for deckhands. Then it goes back to the Cornelia Marie, and the Cornelia Marie is loading their pots and getting ready to go out. Then it goes to the Southern Wind, and they're just getting ready to go out, too. And it shows the Northwestern them getting ready to go out. There's a boat that has not been on the show for four or five years the fishing vessel Seabrook, and the captain is Scott Campbell Jr., and he, it shows him at his home, and he's he's had, like, three back surgeries since he was last on Deadliest Catch, and he's been home and trying to get better, and he got the all-clear from his doctor to go fishing, so it shows them him leaving his home and getting ready to go to shows him getting ready to go crab fishing and then it shows all the boats leaving Dutch Harbor except for the summer bay because they need to find two crew members before they can go out fishing so what they do is all the other boats go out for King crab fishing, and they, they're all going out, and then the Saga, they have six pirate flags on their bow, and they, they start heading into the guys, and then all, all the other captains and crew, they didn't know Jonathan Hillstrand was back on the Bering Sea after three years. They were like, make way, we're coming in to lead the pack. And when they saw the pirate flags, everyone realized that Captain Jonathan Hillstrand is back on the Bering Sea. 
crab fishing because he's bringing quota to the saga. And Jake Anderson, he he's part owner in the saga. So he was at last season he was able to buy his share into the saga. So he's part owner and he brings in Jonathan so they can have more quota. Then it goes to the wizard and the wizard was going more north and where the wizard was going there was a big storm brewing and it's gonna be pretty crazy. Then it goes to the summer bay and the crew they're looking for they're looking for crew members one of the deckhands calls a friend I don't know who it is but he's bringing someone out and Nick hears about a tall Russian guy who had a job from his cousin and he goes and Nick's looking for him, he goes to a bar and then he finds out where the guy is and he's like, let's bring you on to the summer bay to go fishing. So they get him and then it goes back to the Seabrook and the Seabrook is out setting, setting pots and the pots they were and they're out send pots. Then it goes to the Northwestern and the Northwestern set had set their gear and Northwestern they SIG set this gear and they're closer to Dutch Harbor and they didn't they were basically getting blanks. They weren't catching much crab. So they started loading up their pots. Then it goes to the Cornelia Marie, and the Cornelia Marie is setting pots, and they had them, had Maria and the other Greenhorn, they had her drink the blood of a fish, and they cut out the heart of the fish, and gave it to one of the, the other Greenhorn to eat, and it was just funny seeing Josh up in the wheelhouse, he was looked like he was gonna puke but he didn't. It was just really funny. He was gagging. Like that's so gross. But Maria had a good time. Cause she grew up with that kind of tradition. Then it goes to the southern wind and the southern wind is setting the wizard in the southern wind and the saga are in the area of where the storm is up in the north grounds. And they're setting gear, and yeah, then it goes to the Saga, and the Saga is setting gear in a little area called the Gut, where Jonathan, he would, when he was fishing, he'd catch a whole bunch of crab there. So, then it goes to the Wizard, and the Wizard, they were going to set pots, but the storm... They were right in the heart of the storm, and that storm was just too violent. He had the crew going out, and all of a sudden, a giant 30-foot rogue wave comes out of nowhere and just smashes the bow of the wizard. And it was nighttime, so Keith's like, let's just wait until the day to start setting pots, because I don't want to risk losing my crew. Then it goes back to the saga. And the Saga, they go and start pulling their gear. The first pot they pull has 81 crab in it. And then the second the second pot they pull has 91 crab in it. And those are killer numbers for king crab. When you are hitting 81 to 90 plus crab per pot, that is the jackpot. That's the mother load. So... The average you'd get is range from 15 to 50. Those are good numbers, but if you're on 80 to 90 king crab per pot, you want to be on that, and that's what the saga is on. So then it goes to the southern wind, and the southern wind, Captain Harley, he's pulling blanks, 
and he realizes that the saga has not moved, has kind of stayed in the same spot, so he hails Jake over on the radio and asks him how the fishing is, and Jake's like, oh, the fishing isn't good here, and the weather, it's just bad, so we're kind of hunkered down in one spot. So, Harley gets suspicious, so that's what's going on, and then Captain Harley, he's suspicious, so he goes up and he gets suspicious and tries to figure out what's going on. And he starts loading up his pots because they're blanks. Then it goes to the Northwestern, and Sig has Mandy setting pots to the north, a little ways away from where Sig set the pots, and they start setting their gear to see how her area does. Then it goes to the Cornelia Marie, and the Cornelia Marie is about, they um, pull a pot, and it's, it's okay, it's not the best, and all of a sudden, an alarm starts going off, and he finds out in their port engine that the oil pressure is going down, so what they do is they go and he calls Tyler to go and shut the engine off and put oil in it, and he puts oil in it, and then the, press the pressure just keeps going down, so Casey's like, that's it, we're going to port, because we have to fix it, and it turns out to be the oil pump, and that's going to cost him tens of thousands of dollars, because they have to go back to port. It goes to the wizard, and they start sending their gear, because the weather's better, but it's not perfect. And the waves just are crashing over the rail where they're sending pots, and it's just crazy. So they're sending their pots and getting ready to go fishing. Then it goes to the Northwestern, and they start pulling in Mandy's that strings that she set. And their first pot comes in with 48 king crab, which is good, and they keep going, and it's about the same, and that's really good fishing. Then it goes to the southern wind, and the southern wind comes and comes up. They take themselves off the radar, so Jake and Jonathan can't, can't tell the southern wind is in their area, and they check. Captain Harley is known for doing this. He goes and checks other crab boats, pots, and what he does is he checks one of the the Saga's pots, also no, nicknamed as the Saga Bandit, because Jonathan Hillstrand's on the boat. And what they do is they go and they check his pot and they find there's a lot of crab in there, so what Captain Harley says is let's secretly set him down. Let's use the zinc the zinc things that'll sink the buoys and they'll go down for twenty four hours and start popping up. So Harley does that and sets Jake and Jonathan down and Jake and Jonathan on the saga, they don't know they've been set down. So, then it goes to the Seabrook, and the Seabrook is out fishing, starts pulling in the pots they set, and it's blank after blank. And after 16 hours of pulling in pots, they only find one crab out of the pots they pulled. So, they are loading up their pots to go find another, or to go find better ground to fish on. Then it goes to the Saga, and they pull a pot, and they, they're they getting, like, no crab at all. When in the previous day, they were getting 81 to 91 plus king crab per pot, so they're like, Something isn't adding up here, and so they're going, and when they find out there's, like, no crab in there, they start 
um, loading up their pots to move to another another location to catch crab, and then it goes to the southern wind, and the southern wind is right at 24 hours, their pots start popping up, and they start catching the crab that the saga missed, because they heavily baited those pots to lure the crab into their pots instead of the saga's pots. And they're getting 70 plus king crab per pot, which is crazy, because they're basically stealing it from the saga. So, then it goes back to the saga, and they're like, what's going on? And they didn't know that the southern wind was in the area, so they see all of a sudden a pot pops up around them and pots start popping up because the southern wind hasn't gotten to those pots and they realize that the southern wind, Jonathan realizes that the southern wind had zinked their pots and Jonathan's like, this has not been done for a long time in the Bering Sea, but he realized what was happening and he's so pissed off he goes down to his room and he goes out and he pulls a pistol and he starts shooting the southern winds buoy and he unloads a whole clip into that buoy and to send a message and then it goes to the northwestern and the northwestern is still on good ground and Sig is being funny by saying kind of giving Mandy grief. He's happy they're just on really good fishing. Then it goes to the southern wind and the southern wind pulls up one of their pots and they find out that their net had been cut on on their pot because Jonathan and Jake told them, told their crew to just cut and slash, send Harley and the southern wind a message that you don't want to mess with the you don't want to mess with the saga bandit because all hell will break loose when you mess with them. You don't want to mess with the hill strands on the Bering Sea. Then it goes to the saga. The saga is fishing and they're just gonna try and get the southern wind out of their area so they can keep their honey hole to themselves. Um, then it goes to the Summer Bay, and it shows the Summer Bay leaving port, and getting ready to go king crab fishing. Then it goes to the Cornelia Marie, and it shows the Cornelia Marie rolling into port, and they said, we're gonna have the smallest offload that we've ever had. Then it goes to the Wizard, and the Wizard crew... They, after they set their pots, they're on really good numbers also. So, that was the end of episode 1 of season 16 of Deadliest Catch. This season is definitely going to be a crazy season. And it's going to be one season that we will not forget anytime soon. So... I hope you guys enjoy this review of episode one, and I look forward to doing more of these Delius Catch reviews. So, thank you guys for watching. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon down below so you can be notified when I upload videos. Please share this video with your friends and family, and don't forget to hit the like button. Also. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching, and if you ain't dreaming, you ain't living. Don't forget to dream big.